Hey there, I'm Jens Bogren. We are at Fascination Street Studios and I'm gonna do a walkthrough of our new drum library, Crim Drums from Bogren Digital. Let's get right into it. Okay, so Crim Drums is a library for contact, uses the free contact player. The artwork of Crim Drums is actually created by Seth Zero Anton, the singer of Septic Flesh, the band where Crim also plays and this drum kit was actually sampled during their latest album session. The actual kit is a uh, Tama Star kit that uh, I have at Fascination Street Studios. The symbols are the uh, standard setup that uh, Krim uses for live and studio. It's a selection of uh, manual symbols. As you can see there are two hi-hats, uh, one like main hi-hat and then one hi-hat um, on the right, which is commonly used for, for grooves with the double kick. Uh, most of these symbols are just the ones uh, that he is using, but then on the right china there is also a selection for a little bit of an alternative sounding one. The snares are a Kenny Arnoff Tama signature. It's called uh, Kenny Beauty. Uh, which is basically a black beauty copy, so to speak, uh, which is sounding very, very fat and, and beautiful. Uh, we can listen to that one. Ringy. All these uh, drums are sampled the way they actually sound. We haven't uh, dampened them or anything. And the mission here has been to create the most organic and inspiring drum library for metal drums. And the other one is um, Pearl Ultra Cost that we call the Ultra Claws. It's a little bit lower uh, in pitch, but that one cuts through very nicely as well through um, intricate patterns and grooves. For the toms, you can see that uh, there's sort of a standard setup here with uh, 10, 12, but then there is a 14 on the left side, and then it continues with 16, 18 on the right side. So have a listen to those. Also pretty natural balanced room sound. Uh, this is with clear heads, even though they look white here uh, on the screen. Uh, you could also select coded heads. Like this, and then they will be a little darker or less clicky sounding. For the kicks, there are two different ones. The main kick and the secondary kick. For those, there is a selection of three different ones. The ones that are here now on the uh, El Natural preset is actually the one called Old Head. And why is that? Well, um, the Old Head is actually the one that we had still on the kicks after recording uh, the album. I think we changed like once or twice during the actual um, drum recording session. But uh, they were still on when we went in to create this instrument. And I thought they sounded really good, so I wanted to do one session with those. And uh, sometimes you don't want that like completely fresh uh, sounding uh, kick head. Sometimes it can be good if it's already a little stretched and, uh, and whatnot. So we did a sample session with those, and then we did with Fresh Heads Plastic Beater and Felt Beater, which is sort of more metal and a little more rock, perhaps. And the old one is also sounding cool. The secondary kick is um, definitely its own character, and there's nothing wrong with um, to taste even change them if you prefer the sound of the secondary one as your main. That leads me into another thing. This kit has two pretty cool features that are fairly unique. It is the anti-machine gun to make sure that uh, even the most fast fill-ins uh, with snare and toms, even if you have programmed them on like velocity 127, completely quantized, they will still sound natural because it will uh, make the instrument uh, 
redistribute hits to off center and um, do velocity uh, alternations in a way that it sounds much more alive and actually human. Uh, the same for the auto double kick. Uh, if the speed of the um, program kick drum is fast enough, it will start to auto distribute between the left and right kick, which is a very powerful uh, feature. There's also a setting for that sensitivity that I can show you later. All in all, it's a very nice um, kit with one mission to sound as natural but still powerful as possible. So let's move into the mixer and select the master channel on the far right here. The master channel has some master effects that can be put on the sum of all these channels here. And all these channels individually also have the ability to have insert effects or send effects to, to reverbs. There are two reverbs, short and long. You can see them here in the master where you have a global control for the level or amount or decay time, which is like the reverb length. If we click here on kick, for example, you can see that we have a, a few insert effects three slots and uh, four different effects EQ, compressor, transient and saturation. We're going to look at them a little bit more in depth later. Uh, but let's start with the master where all these channels are routed to right now. Uh, if you don't want to use the master, if you want to do the mix yourself in your DAW instead, that's perfectly possible, uh, then these master effects will be uh, not on everything, anything. Uh, these channels would not go through the master if you, instead of routing them to the master, you would route them to your DAW inputs that you could set up inside contact here. Besides the reverb global settings that we have, there is a parallel compressor. That means that um, the whole drum kit gets compressed and then you can use the mix here to sort of choose how much of that compressed sound you want to blend in. And that's a very standard thing for me when I mix drums. I usually see my parallel uh, compression bus as equally important as the main drum bus. I usually do them like 50-50. So for me, a starting point would be to have the mix here in the middle and then compress to taste. If you want to hear only the compressor, you just go up with the mix 100% or if you want to hear how it sounds without it, you can just disengage the, uh, the compressor. There's a master EQ, graphical one, just to top and tail the uh, overall frequency response a little bit. And there is also a master tape on the master output here, uh, which um, emulates real tape, which is a very nice thing for drums in general. It's sort of compresses a little bit and gives um, extra overtones or harmonics with a mild distortion process, you could call it. Um, so all of that helps getting the drums into the mix in a nice fashion. This uh, preset that we've selected, the um, El Natural, first one, it's a very CPU effective preset. Uh, it is just the way the samples are uh, recorded, uh, but it still sounds very, very good. Uh, even without any mix gimmicks here. And on the master you can see that's the compressor, hardly any EQ at all, and a tiny bit of this master tape here. Um, if we go into the next section here, the grooves, we're gonna go through this a little bit more thoroughly in a little bit, and just start playing a groove, and we can go back to the mixer and talk about it. So let me bring that down that fader. So now we have some sound going. As you can hear, the drum sounds uh, very natural, uh, organic. You have this ringy thing that will make them really sit in. Uh, even if you think that, uh, oh, the snare is ringing, uh, that's weird. It's not gonna be weird. As soon as you get on guitars and stuff on, you will just hear that snare, you know, bring emotion and vibe and length uh, to your track. Uh, so you should try that. Okay, so if I want to show you how this parallel compressor sounds like, it's, it's sort of an SSL style uh, compression. 
uh, I could bring up the uh, the mix maximum, um, press play here on the groove player, and um, then do a little more extreme setting with the threshold. Okay, so pretty pulsy sound, but now you can mix that in. So if we do mix zero and then start mixing it in, you can hear how this like engages and revitalizes the, uh, the drum sound. And exactly how much to use of that is um, better to judge once you actually hear some other uh, instruments um, in your mix. Let's move over to some of these channels. Uh, if we look at the, uh, the snare track here, for example, uh, we have sends for reverbs. There's a short reverb and a long reverb. The short one is sampled from a reverb that I like to use, an uh, AMS style of um, non-linear reverb. So it's basically like a gated reverb, if you know what that is. So it's like opens up fully and then closes. Whilst the gated reverb doesn't respond to soft notes, a non-linear will give you reverb on all ghost notes or everything and will like go fully and then stop. It's a very effective way of creating a sensation of nice space around the, uh, the snare or toms. Uh, the long reverb is more like this kind of plate reverb that uh, sends off the, the snare into oblivion, if you wish. Uh, you also have controls here for each and every of those uh, different channels and uh, parts of the drums. You have a control for bleed, uh, how much of the overhead microphones that should uh, play back the snare and how much of the snare that should be inside the room. So if we uh, check out the bleed control on the snare and then hear it together with the groove. There you can basically modify how much of the snare you want up front and how much you want it deep placed in the room. But I would recommend uh, using the standard values, at least as a starting point. There is one global fader for the kicks. And then if you want to change the individual level between the left and right kick, you can do small faders down here. And they will share the same uh, effects here if you put, for example, uh, uh, EQ on. The EQ on the individual channels uh, is this uh, SSL style uh, channel EQ. If we listen to that one solo on the kick. You can modify the frequency response by, by using that one. There's also um, an 1176 style of a compressor on the individual channels. We could actually go to, let's disengage that one, and go to the snare channel and see how that would work. So there you could create pretty extreme results if you wish. There are some other presets in here that uses some of these insert effects. Jens uh, Mumble Pants is uh, one of my favorite presets, for example. And that one for the snare already has a compressor, an EQ. The 1176 compressor is a little bit um, unusual maybe to use if you're not familiar with its controls. For example, the attack goes um, the opposite what you might think. The fast attack is full clockwise and slow attack is anti-clockwise. Same with the release, fastest release is full clockwise 
and slow release is that way. Then you have different ratios and then you also have a mix function. So you can actually parallel process this compressor on each of these individual tracks if you wish to. On the kick here on this Mumble Pants preset you can also see that I'm using um, a saturation effect. If we would listen to this one uh, in its extreme. You can hear how it sort of distorts and compresses the, the kick and uh, leave a lot of sustain. So that's uh, excellent for doing uh, various sorts of extreme sounding results. So apart from the saturation, the EQ and the 1176 style compression, there is also a choice of a, a tr sort of a transient uh, designer here where you can um, modify the attack, increase the attack, decrease attack and uh, increase sustain or length of the drum uh, and shorten it, sort of like an ads -er or kind of curve in the form of an analog uh, style processor instead. Let's put it on the, the snare, it's easier to hear. One of the most powerful tools for mixing drums, in my opinion. The transient designer style effect processor can really make those uh, drums pop, or the opposite if you just want length or whatever. Super useful. So the sharp-eyed person might already have seen that on the Tom channels there is this link Toms button. That's for bleed control and that simply means that if you're on one of the toms and you feel that hmm maybe I want to touch more room on them or the opposite dry them up a little bit you don't have to go through all the five toms to do that uh, they will all link unless you de-click this button then you would have to do it individually one other pretty fundamental thing here is the overhead and the fact that the overhead channel consists of multiple overhead samples of these different symbols. They're all stereo sampled, uh, meaning that it's no single like mono microphones that are just panned. They're all captured with an actual stereo miking, which makes them blend and sound very sweet when used. But we do offer individual control here. So if we play this groove again, beautiful sounding symbols, aren't they? Uh, and you have individual volume control by just writing them here. And that happens before the actual overhead channel and before the um, effect slots here that would affect all of those symbols as an overhead. Another thing that uh, is really good to know is the, uh, the pitch function here. This one will give you the ability to change pitch on snare on kicks and on toms. Snare will actually link top and bottom snare, so you don't have to individually go and pitch them. So if I put this up to, let's say three plus, and then go to snare bottom, which is the microphone underneath the snare, which um, has a much like thinner, sparkly sound, uh, you can see that it followed there. By using the pitch control, especially when you have a ringy snare like this, you could also avoid getting into a clashing note uh, with your track if that's an issue. You can listen to that. I would advise not to go completely extreme unless you're looking for a certain effect, but a 
semi note up and down can be uh, really useful sometimes. Same for kick, if you want to have more like subby extreme type of kick sounds, you could pitch things down. Or opposite, if you want the uh, thinnest jazz kick ever created by human hand, you can pitch it up like this. Same there, uh, the kick sub channel will automatically follow the, uh, the main kick or vice versa. If you don't think that there's enough options here in selecting uh, between these different um, snare drums, these different kicks and, and kick heads, uh, and still want to have um, something else, or you try the presets and still feel, ah, I want to try something else, then there's a trig kick channel and a trig snare channel. And uh, those will offer you the ability to load up uh, a snare sample next to the, um, the real snare. The snare has three samples, and they are all from the um, Jens Bogren Signature drum sample pack that is available as a TCI's and a contact uh, instrument, uh, specially made for mixing. Um, it's a larger selection. We have a few of them in here as a taste and, and support. If you don't find them to, to uh, fit your track, then you can also actually drag and drop any sample. You can have a horse sample, if you wish, and uh, trigger that from your snare by just dragging and, dragging and drop it onto the surface and mix it in. That only works with uh, one shot, meaning the same sample uh, for everything. Uh, the ones that you have here in the snare trick, the built-in Bogan digital ones, those are multi-sampled and will have uh, multi-velocity and round uh, robins to sound as natural as possible. Uh, you can send two reverbs from these and you can also pitch them uh, if you wish. Same with kick. Here you also have the same ability to drag and drop a one-shot sh sample. If you want to have a very consistent uh, kick sound, for example, or if you have some obnoxious uh, electric kick or whatever that you want to put in there. And there is also, from the same Jens Bogren signature drum sample pack, there are a few uh, options here that can sound uh, really good when you add them into the track. So three pretty different sounding type of kicks, depending on uh, what you're going for. Because this is much more than just a metal uh, drum library. Even though it's made for metal, it's made by a metal drummer, by a metal producer, I say that the sheer quality and natural sound of this will uh, make it a great library also for any type of pop and rock stuff that you might uh, want to produce. One thing that is really easy to overlook, once you start to add external samples to your real drums or program drums like this, uh, is um, the face alignment and pitch alignment. Because if you add a sample that on its own, is sounding really rich and uh, full bodied, and it's out of phase or have a very different pitch than the sample that you're adding it to, then together they could face and cancel out low end. And that could happen both if it's the actual polarity that is switched, um, or that is just simply pitch aligned in a bad manner. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I can show you that a little bit here by uh, selecting, for example, the spanker pitch here and then using the pitch wheel to sort of deplace it a little bit. Now you can hear it sounds almost like two snares and they don't really give that full budded sound. But if I would find the pitch where they align, starts to sound very focused and full-bodied again. 
the samples that we have in here are in good alignment with the actual recorded uh, crim drums even though the two snares offered are a little bit different. So this could still require a little manual uh, adjustment from time to time. Or you can choose one of the presets where this is probably already uh, accounted for. The last thing on the mixer page that I want to show you is the envelope. This is a little different. This is actually on sample level where you can increase the attack time and that way you take away attack. Let me show you how that sounds on the snare. So whilst this transient designer thing here is an actual audio processor, the envelope is on sample level and will simply play back the uh, samples faded in or faded out uh, according to like an ADSR curve kind of thing. The envelope controls offered are attack, hold and decay. I don't recommend using them normally, but they are there uh, in case uh, someone feels, for example, that the snare is a little bit too ringy you're not getting the desired effects with anything else. Uh, we could try that as well. So in certain scenarios that could be a very effective tool to sort of shape the length uh, of the different uh, shells. All in all, very powerful mixer. Uh, I've personally been using this instrument quite a lot since we uh, started to, to work on it here at uh, Bogen Digital and Fascination Suite Studios. And so far, I've never routed this out to my DAW, to be honest. I've been uh, working with it using only the built-in mixer because I think it's, it's that good. The promo song that we have uh, for this um, instrument is also all made inside uh, the plugin itself. All right, there are a few other things here that we should look at, like the grooves. They are played and performed by Krim himself. He has laid it out across a few folders, extreme metal, metal, ballad, uh, progressive metal, modern metal, traditional metal, 6-8, progressive metal. And uh, they have a BPM next to them. And that's like the, the recording BPM or their sweet spot BPM. Obviously you can take an extreme metal that was created in 210 and play it back in 280 if you want to, or play it back at 110 if you prefer. Um, so right now this follows my DAW. If I go up here and uh, put 210 in my DAW tempo, then we could listen to this extreme metal groove. last beat. And that sort of just loops there. And if we take the second one, we have to double click it. Third one. All right, so as you can hear, all of these grooves are sounding very, very natural and nice. Uh, the drum sound here uh, is now playing back to the El Natural preset, which has no like mix effect. This is actually how the drums uh, sound. I like when the kit sounds organic, uh, punchy, beautiful, and uh, I like to have a good ring uh, on my snare. Uh, you can modify that uh, to some extent by adding uh, samples, dryer samples, or using the transient designer if you don't like uh, a nice ring on your snare. Uh, but I think that's one thing that sets this library apart a little bit from most uh, offerings on the market, where they usually sound very short. And when you get them into the mix, you just have so little sustain uh, that makes it hard for them to blend in with the track in a nice way. Let's listen to some of the fills that he's created. Let's check something else, like the progressive metal here. And let's 
change the tempo to 130. And let's change the preset while we are here. We can do the party pants one. Let's try the mumble pants. If you click the cogwheel up here for settings and choose mapping, we have a separate video that goes through all this in great uh, detail. But uh, let me just say a few things about it. First of all, important, the mapping preset. If you pull in external MIDI files that are not the grooves that uh, Krim has done in here, uh, instead of having to move all the notes, you can just uh, tell Krim what kind of mapping uh, it should relate to. And then you have the most popular options here uh, on the market. For the different articulations, there is also a trim control. If you feel, for example, that the um, hat pedal is too quiet, then you can bring it up uh, or bring it down. If the bell is um, too loud compared to the main ride or crashed ride, you can modify it here. You could also play the sample by um, clicking the articulation. Which is a pretty helpful way to actually get to know the instrument a little better, to see what the offerings are. And that way um, you will be able to hopefully remember that while programming. And if we click velocities up here to the right, we go into a menu that is mostly designed for e-kits, where you can change uh, the velocity response and thus um, make sure that whatever you uh, engage in with the e-kit will translate into how you intend it to sound. That can be different between different e-kits. Sometimes you have uh, settings in the actual e-kit module as well, and sometimes you would need to adjust here. This does also apply to the actual instrument with whatever media you use, but the design of this is for e-kits mostly. There is one other important thing in this page though, and that's the auto double kick sensitivity. I talked before about uh, how the auto double kick function up here will auto distribute the kick drum across left and right foot uh, when the speed is fast enough. And what that speed should be can be adjusted here. So if you, for example, only want this to apply for super fast kicks, then you would have to ride down the sensitivity. So it's less sensitive and that will uh, decrease the speed that it needs to, to do this. Or if you want this to sort of happen just for even like slow double kick beats, then you could increase this setting. So, there you have it, Crim Drums. We are extremely proud to offer this um, fantastic drum library and we hope that you will enjoy it just as much. <laughs>